Iran's nuclear ambitions, by the way, are more than just weapons. Iran wants to become the dominant power in the Middle East. But given Iran's history of human rights abuses, fomenting sectarian conflict, and sponsorship of terrorism as, as a tool of statecraft, statecraft, the world must never allow that to happen. Fortunately, preventing a dominant Iran is a goal we share with virtually every other nation in the region. Now certainly, we welcome Russia and China's cooperation in facing this challenge, but the prospect of a nuclear-capable Iran is so unacceptable that we must be prepared to act with or without them. And we have a host of willing partners in every region of the world who share our concerns and are relying on our leadership to compel Iran to abandon its ambitions. Now, preferably, we can succeed through coercive means short of military force. We should be open to negotiations with Iran, but always remember that they should not be deemed a success when they only need lead to further negotiations. Stronger pressure shouldn't be postponed, and the expectation of our forbearance will encourage Iran to act in good faith. Nothing in our experience with Iran suggests that it considers such gestures anything other than a lack of resolve on our part. Ultimately, however, we must remember that their ambitions so far have come with a high tolerance for pain. Therefore, even as we work through the United Nations and with the international community on sanctions and on negotiations, we should operate on a dual track. We should also be preparing our allies and the world for the uncomfortable reality that unfortunately, if all else fails, preventing a nuclear Iran may tragically require a military solution.